Who are you going to call? Good morning, everyone. This is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living. And uh, today's a big day, big day, because uh, we got to spray the, the driveway uh, to get rid of our cheat grass and stuff before it gets out of control. Cheat grass can actually hurt our dogs. We get that into their ears and stuff. Uh, in some cases, you may have to have surgery to get it out. So, uh, not a good thing. So uh, we're going to check on the greenhouse, see how everything's doing, and uh, of course my dogs are barking at the neighbors. So one thing I was going to bring up to you is, since I'm a glutton for punishment, I want to do beans and peas and sugar peas uh, here, but I really like hydroponics. So I think we're going to do a hydroponic run from one side to the other um, using a returnable tank system and a trellis so uh, I've got to kind of engineer that a little bit and uh, have that up and running actually fairly soon and uh, so it'll be the NF uh, NFT system which uh, is a nutrient nutrient flow transfer something like that anyway it's pretty cool um, but let's go check uh, our little guys in the the greenhouse here. Right, as I might have pointed out, I put lights in here at nighttime. These guys, they're all solar. Uh, I got six lights in total, four in here and two outside. And uh, uh, we have a security camera coming and, <coughs> sorry, and a uh, time lapse camera which we're going to put in here and uh, watch the growth of the uh, greenhouse. So that'd be kind of cool, huh? So anyway, I'm checking out everything here. Everything looks good. The new uh, iceberg lettuce we put in, they're doing fine. Uh, so yeah, um, like I said, my biggest worry is uh, the morning, you know, the night time's getting too cold. But it's supposed to get up to 80 degrees here today, but our temperatures are all over the place right now. So you never know. But yeah, it's going to be a warm one today. But... Uh, this is a good day to go around with my Ghostbuster outfit and spray the uh, driveway to get rid of the uh, cheat grass. Quick check on the uh, strawberry towers right here. They're all looking really good. I've got this going to five minutes a day on the nutrients, uh, which is giving me about four days in one tank, so that's pretty good. And uh, I got some very happy plants. Um, they're uh, all still very young and uh, but they're taking pretty good. I have a couple that I'm not too sure about, but uh, just give them time and we'll see uh, which ones I might have to replace. But right now I'm looking at about 98% that it looks pretty good. So we're going to get lots of strawberries. Another little thing I did, I cheated. Um, I actually put in two uh, new uh, blueberry plants. Uh, the ones I put in, they I have a couple that might make it, but... Uh, I saw some at the store that looked really good, so I got them. And I added another raspberry plant to replace some of the ones. Uh, like I said in the past videos, I feel like I've been trying to grow sticks. Anyway, so the two raspberry plants, I've, put, I've got one in already. And uh, they're looking pretty good, so I'm pretty happy about those. Okay, I got, I got my uh, backpack all filled up with... Uh, weed and lawn uh, grass killer and we'll be hitting the driveways all throughout the property um, to uh, get the weeds of course and to make sure we can uh, uh, kill our, our uh, cheat grass before it gets too long and uh, that's a real problem here in Central Oregon so let's get going on this. Alright guys get the backpack on it's time to start start pumping <laughs> and walking and uh, once again, this thing works really good.
Well, we got that job done. It won't be the last time. Uh, cheat grass is uh, relentless, so. But I'm glad I got it done. And uh, I bet you I'll end up doing another three or four times through the summer. Uh, the, the grass and weeds are relentless in a big place like this, so that's just how it is. Well, a little time has gone by and I did uh, get our security cameras in. So I got one in the front. Uh, so I can see our front gate here from out there. And then I'll show you what the other one is. All right, guys, we are in the greenhouse and the other security camera is right here. And uh, that's to help me monitor anything in here. And also, in case I get a critter in here, I can see what's going on. So, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Guys, I just thought I'd show you really quick. I have to use a different kind of screen to show you this. This is what the uh, uh, webcam now looks like. Uh, let me bring it totally up to the screen here. So now we can actually see the greenhouse and monitor that and uh, see if there's any issues. And we can watch if there's uh, any problems whatsoever in the greenhouse. And the other camera I put up was in the front yard so we could see the front. Our gate's way in the back here. And uh, so it's also uh, it's very nice to have visibility of some ones in the property so anyway there you go that's the new security camera for the front and the greenhouse all right guys so uh i'm at a part of this video where i'm actually gonna try to create a discussion so sorry about the wind uh it's actually very nice out here but there's a good breeze here so this is my back field here and uh it's fairly healthy in most spots and what I've been thinking about is getting meat birds and using a, uh, a tractor and uh, if you guys aren't familiar with that uh, a chicken tractor is a box that's maybe three feet high um, and moves along the ground um, and you move it in sections and some of this grass here, if you look closely, uh, is a little rough around the edges. So I'm kind of thinking, and, and I'm kind of curious what everybody else is doing, is to get it some Cornish cross birds, which grow really fast. Uh, and it takes up about two months to have them ready to go. And do a tri chicken tractor all throughout this area here. One, to improve the ground and improve the grass, uh, it'll look real ragged, you know, it takes quite a few weeks after the birds have passed through uh, to uh, look nicer. But it'd be really interesting to see running a chicken tractor, at least in this last half of this, uh, oh, I don't know how much, maybe quarter acre, um, probably less than that of what it would do to this area and it would give our birds uh, lots lots of food to eat um, and be grass fed along with normal feed and uh, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking out loud but I'd like to hear your guys' opinion. The Cornish Cross are a difficult bird to, to raise. You, you'll lose a, quite a few um, so I'm thinking about starting with like 25, knowing that I'll probably lose, oh, five to ten of them. And the other thing is I'm not totally equipped for butchering, which means in that time I've got to buy at least the minimal equipment of uh, big uh, scolding pots, uh, a plucking machine uh, to justify the cost is uh, kind of one of those things I be nice to have <laughs> but if I like it uh, it'd be really you know add to our freezer and then the other thing is I just don't know and I keep bringing this up in the videos is is chicken and all other meats gonna get really expensive I know they're gonna go up in price I know inflation is coming but uh, how bad if it's only 10% you know that's you know when you talk about the cost of building a tractor and buying the equipment for butchering 
and all the stuff I need for freezing. Um, you got to balance that too. Is it cheaper to still just buy it from the store? And when you raise your own chicken, I mean, not only that, you're dealing with, you know, a lot of times you go to the store, you just buy chicken breast. And uh, this wind, this wind's going to be a pain. Um, and so, you know, do you separate everything out for chicken, chicken wings and things like that, and your thighs and all that? Uh, you know, that's all a new experience for us. I mean, I've butchered birds before. I've butchered turkeys. And, uh, and used to raise turkeys. So it doesn't bother me, but uh, I imagine I'd get my son involved and pay them and, you know, taking home some chicken too. So it's always important to buy enough for what you want to eat for the year and then have enough to give away to the people that help you process the birds. So, uh, the question is, am I going to make that decision or not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. But I'd love to hear your comments about it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the next thing is, um, I was telling you earlier in the video, I'm going to go to hydroponics in here too. Uh, not totally. But basically I'm going to run an entire hydroponic NFT -T system. Um, so I'll have to put a tank into the ground. I'll just do another 38 gallon tank and do my beans and stuff like that because I hear and I've seen that the growth is very rapid and very plentiful. And uh, that's what I want. I want beans, I want peas, and I want snap peas. And uh, I want them to grow fast because we have a short season in the summer and I want them to really go nuts. So, but anyway, thinking out loud, thought I'd share that with you. Um, do I go with the meat birds? Is it more work than it's worth? Um, I don't know. But <clears throat> what I don't know is how bad we know the cost of food's going up. And we know there's going to be shortages, but how bad? And that's really what would be my driver on that decision. How bad will the food shortage get on basically meat? I don't know. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. There's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. Please take the time to like, to share, and subscribe to our uh, channel. <coughs> and uh, it really helps us out. It really does. And leaving comments really helps us too. So please take the time to do that. Please be safe. Have a great day. Until next time. Bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.